believe that the Bible is accurate? I believe that the Bible is accurate. Okay. And by the Bible, we mean like the New Testament? Old and New Testament. Old and New Testament is accurate. And by accurate, what do we mean? I believe that all of the events that that are written about in the Bible occurred as they are described and recorded. So you're talking about the Bible as a book to take it very literally what is described in the Bible. Okay. From Genesis to Revelation. From Genesis to Revelation. So, okay. On a scale from one to seven, let's say, how confident are you that this belief is true, true and real? One being not at all, seven being absolutely confident. Exactly. Seven. Okay. And on a scale from one to seven, how important is it, would you say, for you to know true things, that the things that you believe in are true? How important is that to you? Seven. Seven. Okay. If someone were to ask you, Sarah, what is the primary reason you know that your belief is true, what would you say? Faith. Faith. And by faith, what do we mean? I don't think you can know the Bible is true by just reading it. Um, There has to be an element of belief in what you read that is beyond comprehension and understanding that comes just from reading. Okay. I'm trying to... And I do also believe that there is historical accuracies that back up the truth of the Bible. Okay. So there's uh, historic information that coincides with the Bible and also faith. Yes. Of those two ways that you know what you know, what are those two ways that are most important to you, would you say? Faith. Okay. And I'm just trying to understand what you mean by faith. Those like, people faith tell me different like things. Faith is like the belief in things that you cannot see and you cannot tangibly put your hands on, but you believe to be true and accurate. So faith is things that Sight we unseen. believe, but without without the evidence that those things are true. No, there's plenty of evidence. And that evidence occurs in the Bible. And so it's hard to say, like, I believe the Bible to be true because the Bible is true. You know what I'm saying? Like, it gets a little bit confusing. Yeah. And that's where faith comes into play. Okay. The faith is believing in something where you might not have tangible evidence for that thing being true. I don't have tangible evidence, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um... And I'm trying to understand, how do we know things that we don't have tangible evidence for? Well, do you believe that there is air around you that is breathable? Yes. Do you currently have tangible evidence that there is air around you that you can breathe and your body uses? Well, I feel it. I, when the wind blows, I'm, it touches my skin. and. But it doesn't prove that the air is breathable and that your body uses it. Okay, so air is okay. That's interesting. So air is something that I don't have maybe direct evidence for it being Present. real and true, but it's real and true. So I wonder if and that's a great example. I wonder if there's an example where I could set up some sort of test to find out whether air exists. Or not. I mean, is there, I know that it's hard for me to know, just sitting here saying this is air, that's air, but I wonder if there's a way we could find out, I could test. Oh, I'm sure that chemists and scientists can, but you and I, the average person, we can't do that. So scientists, a scientist could say they could test the air or do something like this is air is composed of oxygen and nitrogen or whatever. Yes. Is there a way to do that with your belief? I believe that there are great scholars who have greater evidence than what I know to be, what I can like produce in this moment, um, who do have tangible proof that the Bible is real. Things ask- like the Dead Sea Scrolls and yeah. the other books of the Bible that have been found I with see. all four accounts of the Gospels I matching. 
So let me ask you this. Let's say Jane. Jane is sitting next to you, and Jane believes in the Quran, and she has faith that the Quran is true, and she relies on biblicalists, I mean, Quran scholars to tell her information, and she, it's okay, and she, um, she, but mostly relies on faith. And I'm a third person. If what she's telling me about the Quran is true, I'd like to believe that. And she says everything in the Quran is absolutely true. And if what you're saying is perfectly true, I'd like to believe that. Is there a way I could figure it out by hearing you and Jane talk? Um, possibly not me, because I'm not uh, the most scholarly on the evidence of the Bible. But there are other people who are far more educated in that field who have yeah. provided that evidence to non-believers. Okay. It, I think I understand. I'm just trying to understand the. You said the primary way you know it is faith, and I'm just really trying to understand what you mean, um, in the sense that if someone else could have a faith in a different religion, with just as much faith, they totally 100% believe it, and you totally 100% believe that based on faith. Right. I'm also not the kind of person who's going to argue with Jane yeah. Yeah. about her belief. Yeah. Um, if she wants to know more about my belief, I would share the Bible with her. Um, I do know that Muslims in general are very well educated in the Quran and in apologetics um, as far as defending the Quran. Um, and historically, Christians are not historically. But I would say in the last mm, hundred years, Christians have definitely become less informed about apologetics, and I'm a perfect example of that. I guess what I'm wondering is if you could use faith to come to believe that the Bible is literally true, and you could use faith to come to the conclusion that the Quran is literally true. I'm wondering if faith is a reliable means, in this case, to find out what is true. What do you think? Um, I think that is the definition of faith, is that you are believing things that you believe to be true, and some of that is sight unseen. Like yeah. you can't, there isn't, um, this is a rock, this, this is stone on the ground and yeah, you can yeah. see it and it, there's evidence of that stone. But the things that happened in the Bible took place so long ago that our physical evidence is not as easy to come by. Right. Um, and again, that's because I am unscholared in it. Um, I did grow up in a home where I went to church and it was a different kind of church. And I walked away from it all for uh, almost 10 years. And it was through a through many conversations with someone else that I came to believe for myself that the Bible was true. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder, let's suppose what Jane believes about the Quran is wrong. We just know she's incorrect about the Quran. It's not a literal document that we should read and take as true, okay? How could we show her that? Is there a way we could like, show her that, look, I know you believe it. I know you have faith that it's true. I as honestly her, don't know enough about the Quran to be able to argue that or to well, she believes demonstrate on, that. She believes it on faith. So that's, I'm wondering how we could show her it's not true. That wouldn't be my goal. Ever. Yeah, but if, I understand, but if she wants to know it, it's not true if it's not true. Is there, I mean, if, could we help her show her? So in, like me, I would direct her towards more intellectual scholars that can provide her with the actual evidence that okay. she's looking for. So scholars. I'm just not. Yeah, yeah. And if she sees those scholars and they, they tell her information and stuff, but she says, well, I still believe it on faith. It's still most important. Is there anything we can do at this point? Or is she stuck with that belief, do you think? No one's stuck in their belief ever, I don't think. There's always an opportunity, depending on like 
your mindset growth, yeah. there's always an opportunity for learning more and expanding your mind beyond what you what you did before. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Same yeah, thing yeah. with me. Like I, as a child, I believed what I was taught because that's what I was taught, right? And I believed that the way that things were done yeah. were the right way. Right, but if something happened and you decided that that was not... Correct. Right, so one of the biggest ones for me was uh, baptism. Um, in the Christian faith, baptism is big, and it's big, and it also is very diverse as yeah. to what people believe about it. And I grew up having been infant baptized um, with a sprinkling. Yeah. And after coming to my own faith in my mid-20s, I chose to be they call it believer's baptism where okay. you're fully submerged after salvation i'm aware yeah and so that was a huge growth in my mindset because a lot of people get stuck on what they were taught as a child and how they were raised and what they knew to be true as a kid and they never grow beyond it but i listen to scholars <laughs> and talked with other people who were able to help me understand a different thought process about baptism that did not match what I believed as a child. Um, yeah, and I have a few questions about that. That's excellent. So you had this belief and something happened where you decided that this was not, this was incorrect belief, and so you have a new belief. Do you think that that's possible with the belief you have now? Is it possible for you, whatever this belief is you have now, is it for you to, do you think it's possible for you to change again? Or whatever you believe now, that's it. You're like, you're you're done, this is... This no, is. I think there's always opportunity for growth if you're open to it. Yeah. Some people just shut down from that. Right. They, they just decide like, this is it, and they're never wavering from it. I'm never wavering. I. I've committed my life to Jesus and I believe in my eternal salvation. So I'm not wavering from that, but are there other parts of my belief system that can be grown and matured or changed over time? Absolutely. So you're saying like the fundamental part of the belief that's set for you? For me, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's a weird question, but do you think it's, we're almost finished. No worries. Thank you. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, do you think it's useful in a general sense, just generally, to have a belief, any belief, that can't be shown to be incorrect? Because if a belief couldn't be shown to be incorrect, if it happened to be correct, then how do we really know that it's true? I think that's where faith comes in. Like, even people who what little I know about the Quran, they have to have faith yeah. in what it's taught. Yeah, yeah. And so they can't necessarily, you know, the people who wrote the Quran are no longer alive. And so they can't, the authors of the Quran or the author of the Quran can't justify or validate what he wrote. Well, that's what's so confusing to me is that Jane believes in a seven out of seven that the Quran is literally true. Everything in there is true. And I know you believe in the 7 out of 7 that the Bible is literally true. And I'm, I guess what I was thinking is that we're sort of, we can't bridge that divide because if there's nothing that could happen that would change your belief and nothing that could happen that would change her belief, that we're just sort of stuck. Or am I wrong? Um, I think for some people, they're, they're never will be a change, that they're always going to believe what they believe. Um, for me, that's part of Christianity. Like, you, if you profess that belief, I believe there's a Bible verse that says, I am my Father in one, and, you know, I if my Father holds you in His hand, basic, like, I hold you in my hand, and God holds me in His hand, and we are inseparable. And so that belief right there tells me, like, God yeah. forever. Yeah. So there's something, I think I understand better, so it's something better to hold a belief at a 7 out of 7 out of, instead of a 6.9 out of 7. There, 
there, there's a reason for that. To be all in except as opposed to like leaving the door open. I think as far as Christianity goes, yeah, yeah. It, it really demands a seven out of seven. How so? Because if the Bible isn't all true, then none of it's true. Because if if you don't believe that Jesus is who he says he was, yeah. then everything he taught is false. Okay. And if you don't believe that God fulfills his promises as he promised to Abraham and Isaac and Noah and many more, then none of his promises are true and none of his promises for mankind will come to fruition. Yeah. And which also would mean that there is no literal heaven and there is no literal hell. I think I see better. Um, if, if your belief happened not to be true, and I'm not saying this, I'm just saying if it happened not to be true, would your life be different than you think? You mean like if I learned that my belief was not true? I know, I know that you're 7 out of 7 and that's not going to change, but if for whatever reason, despite that, you seem to figure out that the belief wasn't true, would, you, would your life be different or to be the same? Yes. It'd be different. Also, I've watched other people walk away from a belief yeah. in the Bible in the same beliefs that I have. Yeah. And to be honest, they're very miserable people. So there's high stakes here. So if you were to believe the belief less, there would be, from what you've seen, your experience of this is that you would not be as happy or not be fulfilled or, or it seems like and you've I, seen yeah. evidence of miserable people who believe the belief a little bit less. Than you. Oh, they don't believe at all. Or anymore. don't believe at all, sure. Yeah. Yeah. They have no hope and they have no, nothing to draw from in their daily life. Between faith and what the belief does for you, like the benefits you get, what would you say is the most important, the most important aspect of the belief? Eternal salvation. Eternal salvation. That you're gonna live forever, live forever in God's kingdom, worshiping and praising Him. Gotcha.